Hello, it's James from So Make It. Today we're at Winchester Science Festival at the Winchester Discovery Centre. <laughs> Winchester Discovery Centre is also the library and it has this extra piece on and there's also auditoriums where they do talks which are going on throughout the festival. So this is where we're based. We've got my BB-8 droid, 3D printing, including the Cerberus from the space. He's currently making an owl. And we also have squishy circuits. Yeah, break it down into smaller steps than it does currently. I think it breaks each move down into 160 steps or something to, to go at this speed and should be able to do better and produce more accurate prints if I um, went to you know, double that or something. So. Right, I'm here with Matt and Simon from Southampton University who are going to demonstrate can crushing. So what are we doing? So we're going to crush can. Crush can. Right. What we're basically doing here is we're taking a can which is a normal Coke can and we put some water in it, heated it up for steam and that steam is pushing out on the can while the atmosphere is pushing back in again. Okay. And we turn that steam directly into water and see what happens. Wow. And hopefully you saw that very, very quickly that can imploded. And at the end of a star's life, exactly the same thing happened. A star compresses from something the size of the sun to something the size of a city in under a second. And having done that, the rest of the star then compresses on top of it and it explodes back up in something that can last for like 30 to 40 days. Despite the star itself having lived for over a billion years, it dies in under a second. Okay, go on one more. Let's try this one. Go on. Cool. All right, thank you very much. All right, I'm here with Jenny from the Bug Shack. So tell us a bit about the Bug Shack. Well, the Bug Shack is a company and we provide bags of bugs that people can take home and cook. Here is an example. So I sell things like buffalo worms, crickets, grasshoppers and mealworms. And then I encourage people to, to try the things that I've cooked myself. So these ones are chocolate chip cookies and they have chocolate chips and they also have crickets. And the brilliant thing about crickets is they have about the same amount of protein as beef. They are also high in calcium and iron and B vitamins, so they're actually really, really good for you. And I'd like to tell people that if you could decrease how much beef or chicken or pork you eat and just add maybe 15% of that, swap it with something like crickets, then it's really, really good for the environment. Uh, if you take a look at the, the sign, the really cool thing about insects is they're way better for the environment than farming of traditional livestock. And that's in terms of water, feed, emissions, and how much land you need for actual farming. So it's really good in terms of having a circular economy as well, by reusing waste food that people don't want to eat that can be then fed to insects. These are some soy sauce mealworms. So I've cooked these ones at home myself. Just bake them in the oven for about four minutes on a low temperature with the soy sauce marinade. Okay, and can you show us how you eat them? How you eat them, yep. They're a little bit like nuts, they're quite crispy. Okay. Mm. And it's right. salty because they're soy sauce. All right, sounds good. Mm. Well, actually, people say they're like popcorn or Bombay mix. Yeah. <laughs> 
when the lights shine, they shine out the front, and the mirror at the front is a special mirror, so it lets out half the light that goes to your eyes, and half of the light gets reflected back again. Uh, I can hear Emily. Where's she gone? Yeah. All right, so it's the end of Saturday. We're packing up. The owl has finished printing, and so has this owl finished printing. And everyone's had a lot of fun, including the LED and squishy circuits workshop, which looks like an LED explosion. Yeah. There you go, Jen. Right, it's Sunday morning, we're back for some more. So today we've got 3D printing. We've probably got squishy circuits when we get that unpacked. And today I'm also with the R2D2 builders, mainly myself, because today I've got my R6 droid with me. <laughs> The original ones were actually meant for Imperial extrusions, which were an inch and a half, so it only had to be designed all these bits to fit these 40 millimeter extrusions. Because they were uh, 10 times more expensive. So. <laughs> I'm here with David from Southampton University who's got a little fuel cell which is going to explain to us. Alright, so what have we got? Uh, okay, so here we've got a uh, hydrogen and oxygen fuel cell. Um, so what we're doing at the moment is in order to store, well, we want to fuel uh, for our fuel cell, so we're putting in energy. Um, so ideally um, this would be a renewable source rather than a battery pack, but as we're indoors and it's a rainy day, battery pack it is. We are breaking apart a water molecule. Um, which is H2O, two lots of hydrogen, one lot of oxygen. So we're breaking it apart, collecting the hydrogen atoms on one side and the oxygen atoms on the other side. This is our fuel for, for our fuel cell. So like petrol goes into uh, a car engine, um, hydrogen and oxygen go into a fuel cell in order to give us electricity. Um, okay, so now our, we've made our fuel. You can see the bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, there, so collected under upturned flasks. So we'll plug our fuel cell in now. So now um, the hydrogen and oxygen react spontaneously um, together and also produce um, electricity as well as byproduct, which is water. So as you can see, it's a very environmentally friendly process. There is no carbon dioxide um, or other pollutants uh, produced. Uh, the way the fuel cell works is if you imagine a box with a semi-permeable membrane, a special wall or barrier that lets some things through but not others. This prevents the hydrogen oxygen reacting directly and causing an explosion. Um, instead we're doing an electrochemical reaction which is more efficient and a better way of extracting the energy from our fuels. Um, on the hydrogen side what our catalyst does is it breaks apart 
um, the hydrogen atom into a proton, a positively charged uh, particle, and an electron, a negatively charged particle. Uh, the barrier allows the protons to pass through and react with the oxygen, whereas the electron is forced around the external circuit, which is powering our fan or other um, device or application. And then on the oxygen side, what the catalyst does is it sticks the protons, electrons, and oxygen atoms back together again, forming water. Um, so obviously this is a really uh, environmentally friendly process, why aren't we all using it already? Uh, the problem lies in the catalysts, so the catalysts are all based on platinum, which is a very expensive metal, and our research at Southampton is focusing on reducing the amount of platinum we need in, in a fuel cell. I printed it a uh, polycarbonate, yeah. and that fell was dreadful, it was full of air bubbles and things like that. Or, Very um, and if you get moisture in it, then what happens when it gets to the end, it sort of explodes out. Oh, well, oh yeah, that's no good. Little bubbles, yeah. so that tends to ruin your prints.